G'day guys, welcome back. So the consensus was pretty much unanimous that I do the split cup uh, for my next series. So the first one was greens, this one is purples. So um, I'm using the Montmartre purples. Now this is violet. So I've made a few different colours with the purples that I have. I've got the violet and the, um, where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, this one called mauve, or mauve as the people in the States say it. So these two with a little bit of phthalo blue and just a little tiny blob of black has made my dioxazine purple. Uh, this one on the end is the normal purple, which is violet. That one is the violet with a bit of white. And then this one is the magenta, which is, I'll show it to you. Oh, it's, it's big bottles. I don't keep them all down here. That's the magenta and the violet made this gorgeous plum colour. So, you know, you don't have to buy, well, they don't actually make all those different colours, but you can make different colours from the colours that you've got. I'm going to use the split cup. Now, pouring medium, same as usual, 60% glue. This is Elmer's glue all, 40% water. You can use um, any craft glue you like. Best not to use a wood glue. The craft glues are better. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six colours. Each cup started with 60 grams of pouring medium, 60 grams of paint, and then the white, I added an extra blob of white. The black, I watered down, I put a squirt of water in it. Uh, it was too thick. Now, just two drops of silicone oil. A few extra fell in last time and I wasn't meant to put that many in. So this is the spot on treadmill belt lubricant 100% silicone I buy this from eBay um, I think it's about $60 or something by the time I pay for postage but you know you use two drops I'm sure it would last you a couple of years if you bought one of these so it's well worth the investment I feel in getting one of those just twist the nozzle don't take the nozzle off and pour half a bottle in it's just a couple of drops I used to do one drop per 30 grams or one drop per ounce, but I've actually reduced that recently. So I've got, uh, what have I got? Four ounces of pouring medium, four ounces of paint. No, I haven't. Two ounces of pouring medium and two ounces of paint. So that's four ounces, but only two drops. And I find that it's plenty. I don't need any more. So I'm getting a nice little mound on a mound, little mound on my, I'm going to lift my stick up like that. You don't want it too thick or you'll get more like bullets instead of cells. So you just got to be careful, just practice with your consistency. Too thin and your cells will go, grow, 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 grow um, and too thick and you won't really get your cells. You'll get more like bullets and they might go a little bit fuzzy and hazy looking. Righto, let's start. I'm going to do one layer on this side first. So I've got light, dark, light, dark as usual. No point putting dioxins in purple and black next to each other, is there? You won't see the cells. You won't see the rings around the cells because it will just be too dark. So go light, dark, light, dark. Let's spread these out a little bit before I knock something over. A little bit of black. I didn't make up as much black this time. They're all relatively dark colours. Purples. Hope it's not going to be too boring in colours. Now that's got the white. I'm going to start with the purple here. Let's turn it around. Purple. And then I'll continue with the same colours, but they'll when they come out, they'll still be different because they'll be in, in, you know, different layers next to each other. So, I 
I could start at this end and layer them that way and start one and layer it that way so I still I still may do that at some stage All right now this one needs white on the, the top so I'll turn it around and give this one a little bit of white and then start again So I've got a few days off work now. Well, actually, in total, I have got three weeks off work. Woohoo! <laughs> I think I told you in one of my previous videos that um, where I'm working, because I work in a, a private hospital, um, I do recovery in, in the day ward at the moment. Um, you know, people are coming for short stay procedures and kids, dental, EMT, gynae. Um, what do we do? IVF, all kinds of things, but just day cases. And uh, the ward or the, the area that's doing the sterilisation of the theatre equipment is shut for two weeks after Christmas. They're doing some renovations. So we can't sterilise equipment, so we can't operate. So my, all my work colleagues in our department have got the Christmas week off and then we've got another two weeks off after that as well so we have three weeks off which I'm not complaining about you know I'll catch up on some pouring work on my puzzle did you guys see my puzzle on the last video <laughs> it's so hard anyone else get puzzles for Christmas they're pretty fun a little bit of white on this one as well so I've pretty much done my layers that I want to do now I'm just going to top up with whatever's left oh shoe fly there's another fly oh my gosh These ones just may end up being a little bit similar. I'm just going to put on whatever I've got here to fill it up. Someone said to me in the last video on their comments, comments they said, oh, it's very nice, but you used a lot of paint. Well, yes, I do. Um, and if you're an experienced pourer, you will know why I use so much paint. Don't you? <laughs> yes <laughs> yes you do need a lot of paint um, if you use if I used half of this I'd be overstretching everything so you do need it and it's usually the the beginners that say wow you're using too much paint or you're wasting all that paint and it's not until you get more experience that you realize exactly why you use so much paint and um, it's, I don't think it's something people can tell you. You really just have to work it out for yourself because I can say, well, you need that. And they go, well, no, you don't. Don't be ridiculous. Way too much. But um, you'll, you'll see what I mean once you get more experience. And you don't want your cells overstretching because you haven't got enough paint on, so you're stretching everything over to cover the corners. Alrighty, look at that. Okay, now I'm going to tilt the same way as I did last time with, you know, a bit of a movement in it. So, oops, let me turn it that way, I think. There's no way I can flip that over without turning the canvas over because it's just too full. So you can see the white there on that side, the purple on that side. Got my little corner catcher ready if I need it. So I'm going to do a little bit of a swirl thing again. And uh, make sure that I take the swirl off the canvas. Otherwise you end up with a bit of a muddy, if you leave it in the middle, you end up with like a, a swirly bit that I don't like. So I always like to take the cup off the canvas. And uh, I might see if I can go a little bit slower to actually get more paint out because I left quite a bit in there last time, I feel. 
All right, are we ready? Let's do this. So we're going quite stripy towards the end here, aren't we? I wasn't sure what to do with it because, as I said, I want to keep as much paint as possible. I'll do this to get it off the corners, onto the corners there. Try not to waste any. All right. Pretty cup. <gasps> Look at that. You're not loving the stripes, but hey, that's, that's okay. <laughs> All right, let's get this tilted a little bit. It's very thin here, the paint, because it's the last little bit. So I don't mind if that's going to go. Some of that may well go. Just encourage that paint down a little bit onto the wet, to wet the canvas. And I'm just going to catch this because I don't want to lose too much. See, that stripey bit's gone now. I think I'll do the same here, get rid of that stripey bit. I always put paint on the corners, but then I don't really like it there because I don't like the stripes. But that's okay. It's just there to wet the canvas. So that looks really pretty, doesn't it? Now we'll turn that around. Make sure you take your gloves around. You don't drip into the middle. Um, now, what will I do? Um, all right, I'm not going to tilt anymore for now. I'm going to torch first and then I'll tilt. So hopefully we get some nice big cells. Look at the white. White does that. Uh, I think I was telling you in the last video that I got, and I got sidetracked, and I got a list of um, Montmartre densities like which paint were opaque and which were semi-opaque and which were transparent i was a bit disappointed actually that the only ones that were transparent were the fluoros which is a real shame so basically there's just a few paints that are opaque uh, and the rest of them are all semi-opaque which doesn't give you a huge um, like variety when you're layering your paints you're going to most likely have semi-transparent next to semi-transparent unless you actually go out of your way to find out which ones the uh, opaques are like the black and the white usually colors that have got white mixed in with them to make them lighter uh, like a turquoise that's a don't like that uh, that's a um, Opaque. I did put the list up on the um, Facebook group page, so if you're interested, you can have a look there. And it is better, if you can, to layer them opaque, semi-opaque, opaque, semi-opaque, semi like transparent. You know, try and put a few different ones in rather than have opaque, opaque next to each other because you won't get your your rings around your cells if you have two opaques next to each other. You want an opaque and then a semi-transparent and then an opaque and then a transparent and you know, separate them. Um, if you've got two semi-transparents together, again, you're not really going to get the great cell rings. So I was a bit disappointed when I saw that from Montmartre. I thought that they would perhaps do a better quality paint that we could actually get, um, you know, transparents out of, but it seems it's not to be. This is looking really pretty, isn't it? I don't want to lose. Oh, I guess I'm going to have to kind of. I'm going to have to go over there. I didn't want to put too much white over there, but okay. There we go. <laughs> right now, let's walk back and forth. Get some of this off this corner. I'm just getting rid of the stripes off the corners. Really, that's all. Checking my composition here. I'll turn that around. It's a little bit busy down here, but I, I don't know if I can get all the way back down there again. Let's have a look. Walk it back and forth, back and forth. 
get rid of a little bit of that busyness and then come back so walk it back again you walked it down so you need to walk it back again left and right otherwise your, your cells aren't going to be circular they'll just be long and elongated <laughs> oh that's really pretty <laughs> it's so nice uh, and I didn't even use all my black. I made up less black this time and I didn't use it all. So uh, black can be you know, really quite strong. It overtakes a lot of pores. So just be careful with it. I do like it in there for the contrast. But as I said, all the colours that I've chosen were relatively dark. But we've got some white through there. Got a little bit of white through there. Got that lovely plum there. And we've got some plum here. So it's, it's kind of balanced. And we've got the purple through the middle. Uh, where did the lilac go? The lilac seemed to be a little bit on the thin side. I did add an extra blob of lilac paint, but uh, because it maybe have been a little bit too thin, it's kind of disappeared. Or maybe that's it there through the middle. It's been mixed in with the white. Could have been that. So it's gone very pale lilac. But um, yeah, the colours have all blended nicely and you get different colours from what you started with because they all blend together. So what do you think? Number two, purple. Let's go down for a close-up. Zoom in a bit from up here. And then I can take you down. So you can't really see the lilac all that much. A little bit. Kind of looks a little bit silvery, doesn't it? All right, let's go down and have a look. A closer look at the cells. Oops, my ladder's a bit squeaky. Did you hear my squeaky ladder? <laughs> All right, so again, the white is showing up beautifully. I added that extra blob of white. Um, sometimes if your white's too thin, you don't get, you don't really see the white, but I've actually, you can actually see the white over the top there, which is nice. If you don't like that look, then, um, you know, you can thin your white down a little bit. But if you thin your white too much, it just disappears. What it does is it blends in. Oh, there's a little bit of lilac there. You, if your colours are too thin, they just blend with your other colours and make them all a little bit lighter and you don't actually see the white on its own. That's really pretty there, isn't it? Look at that. That's a great shot there. How many rings have we got there? We've got multiple rings. See, that's where I must have had... Um, sem semi-transparent, opaque, semi-transparent, because we're getting the different rings there. And where you see things that look more like bullets, like that without rings, it may be two opaques next to each other. So you don't get the rings. So just a little bit of science there for you. So just try and choose most good quality paints, you know, like Mark Martin, Global, which is Australian, Liquitex Basics, Golden, um, Amsterdam. All your good brands are going to tell you on the bottle if they're opaque, semi-transparent or transparent. Craft paints don't have the different amounts of pigments in them. They're probably all the same pigment count. So it's not going to give you that information so I just think you get a better result if you can have a few different weights I guess opacities densities more like they're called densities it's the weight of the, the pigment so anyway research it a little bit it's, it's a bit hard to explain but if you want to know more just research it and uh, I will see you for the next one what color shall we do next pop your um, thoughts in the comments. So we've done green, we've done purple, 
what's next. <laughs> All right, I'll see you soon for that one. Bye for now.